Erev Tov, I'm Stephen Benoon, and you are watching Israeli News Live. We have some very serious news, both in Israel and in the border of Russia and Eastern Europe tonight. I want to bring this news to your attention here. This came off of uh, TASS Russian News Agency here, and there's actually several articles I'd like to bring to your attention because this has been mounting now over the course of the last year, but this particular news article does certainly... Uh, bring to mind a very serious situation. Russia's security chief says hot, uh, hot beds of tension emerge near Russia's border. Uh, this is the official statement from them there. The United States and NATO are increasing their military presence in Europe, European states neighboring Russia. Uh, it says here uh, on September 1st, uh, the military tensions are being created and U.S. and NATO military presence is increasing near Russia's border. Russian Security Council Secretary uh, Nikolai uh, Pratrushev said on Tuesday, the United States and NATO are increasing their military presence. E European states uh, neighboring Russia is a hotbed of military uh, tensions are being created near our bar border, he says. There, there have been continuous attempts at bringing anti-Russian political regimes to power. In former Soviet states, uh, Petrushev said, delivering a lecture at the State Marine Technical University at St. Petersburg, he said here on the first Tuesday. Most Western powers were actively upgrading their armed forces inventory in the offensive. Capability of North Atlantic Alliance and armed services was growing, he added. Uh, we also know that there is a tremendous amount of tension going on in Ukraine. Uh, not only is it uh, the fighting going on still continuous in the eastern part of Ukraine, heavy shelling has been going back and forth between uh, the Donsk and Luhansk regions uh, against the advancing Kiev forces there. Of course, they have actually been able to hold their own. And, uh, and then, of course, Poroshenko seems to be losing his grip on power as far as controlling his own public there. Uh, as they were getting ready to vote yesterday for uh, their, their, the change of their uh, constitution, as we reported this yesterday as well, riots broke out in the capital. Uh, capital. 3,000 protesters were there. Of course, uh, the uh, Kiev's government is blaming uh, this partly on Russia, that they believe that they were involved in it. Uh, but no doubt, as I, we put it also in our own news there, that they're, they're reaping what they sowed. They brought the United States in with a bunch of neo-Nazis in order to overthrow the uh, legalized government that was elected in uh, Ukraine, regardless of, no doubt, the, the issues that may have come with that government. But they did a coup instead of de dealing with this through a political means. Instead of trying to negotiate with Russia to get involved with this, the United States helped do a coup to overthrow the government there. Well, they were successful in doing so, but now it's turned into an all-out war and, a, and, in fact, an annihilation, a genocide of the, of the Russian-speaking people in eastern Ukraine. It's quite a shame to see this actually happening. Uh, but anyway, there's, there's other news as well that we have noted in this uh, uh, other articles that have been brought to our attention as well regarding this. Uh, Russia, by the way, were dropping uh, soldiers off, not a military drill, that is, not a military drill. This is Russia putting soldiers closer to the border because of the tensions uh, that they say are happening on their border there. Um, uh, we also find in another article uh, that we've posted on Israeli News Live, our Facebook page is called the, the Big Read is the name of the news source for this as well. Uh, and the title of the article is Russia, Border Tensions. Uh, behind the rhetoric between NATO and Moscow over Ukraine, there is a little appetite for war. Now, this is an article where they're picking up the conversation of a Polish woman who lives only a few miles from the Russian border. And this is what she says here. You can hear the shooting at four in the morning, says Miss uh, Pl uh, Pl 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 uh, Yenis, who lives in uh, Brown. Uh, Branewa, a small town a few miles from the border uh, with Kaliningrad, the heavily militarized Russian enclave squeezed between Poland and the Baltic states. When you know that, f that your friends are out there in the field, it makes you think that the threat is real, she stated. 
Since the invasion of the annexation of Crimea early last year, as the article reports, and the subsequent conflict in the East Ukraine, the border between eastern edge of Europe and Russia has seen a surge in military activity, a public fear, the specter of uh, reinsurgent aggressive uh, Russia has spooked the likes of Poland and the Baltic states where tens of millions remember decades of the Soviet rule and every school child is taught of the invasion and annexation and attacks by the Moscow in the centuries past. Now, I, I might bring this a little bit home for us. My wife grew up in the former Soviet Union. She actually, when she was uh, a high school student, a senior in high school, is when uh, the former Soviet states were liberated. She was in the country of Slovakia. She was also uh, entering into medical school at the time. And, uh, but this came as a shock to her. She grew up under this such a regi regime. And, and she'll tell you, she did not like living under communism. But our issue that we look at here is what is creating the problems that we're seeing here in Eastern Europe. And quite frankly, a lot of the, the we, we try to put aside the political rhetoric here because we're definitely not for communism, but we see that Russia is trying to protect their own interest. NATO did a buildup of forces before Russia ever come up on the border here. And uh, it was uh, the United States that was involved in overthrowing the Ukrainian government before Russia had to come to Crimea's aid uh, in order to protect the 90% Russian speaking people in Crimea. It was a, a realistically a, a genocide that was happened to any of the Russian people there. There's been evidence that is to, to support this. There's been documentary by Russia also, also that supports this. Uh, there has been other evidence that has come out of the Ukraine to show the, the murder of the civilian population. So all rhetoric aside, we must look at this. As I said again, my wife grew up in the Soviet Union and she did not like it. And she tells you it is not the type of life you would want to live under communism. So we don't support communism, but then again, we don't support uh, a, a globalist agenda where the United States is fighting the Vatican's wars and taking over lands as a, as a land grab of where they think that they should do. So we tried to show you the non-biased side of this here because I'm certainly proud of being an American, but I am ashamed of the Obama administration and the actions that they have actually done against different governments around the world here in the, in the last uh, eight years. Uh, even under Bush, there's been things that were done that are certainly not ethical by the United States uh, government. But the United States people, on the other hand, are great people, people that love, people that do care, a Christian nation, or at least at once was a Christian nation. There's still many believers there that stand for moral and, and doing the right things. But more and more, we're finding American citizens that are actually taken aside for Russia on this situation because showing at least their support that Russia does not appear to be the aggressor in this situation here. As we saw recently in Roy Jones Jr., the famous uh, 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 boxer in America, undefeated boxer in the United States there, also uh, stepped forward and said there should be more dialogue between the two nations. It's something that doesn't need to come to blows such as this. Uh, anyway, in other news here, I want to bring to your attention here, we have a very serious situation going on in Israel, in the old city. And by the way, if you are visiting Israel, if you're visiting the old city, I would caution you, especially at nighttime. Now, Israel has some of the most amazing security forces in the world, uh, without, a, without a doubt. But you must keep in mind, too, they have a stand-down policy when it comes to the Arab people there. And in the, East, in the Jewish quarter, where Arabs are wanting to attack Jews, it is becoming increasingly more and more dangerous uh, to travel through there, especially at nighttime. I would think daytime is, is far safer by far. Uh, but just be aware and use caution when traveling at nighttime. Uh, of course, the Arabs, they are very much prejudiced. They hate the Jewish people and they attack the Jewish people. Uh, so if you're not Jewish, then you have a heck of a lot safer time as far as that goes. But terrorism is terrorism nonetheless, and it's certainly appalling to know. Anyway, in the article here on Israel National News, this article here uh, actually came out uh, today as well. It says, Special Security Officer to Guard Jerusalem's Old City. Uh, and it says, in the midst of an ongoing wave of terrorism in Jerusalem, a security officer has been appointed by the municipality to help protect the security of the Jews in the area. 
Arut Shiva has learned that the officer began his job on Tuesday, which is kind of a shame if you ask me, one security guard. That's all they do is give the Jewish people one security guard. They need at least a dozen, a dozen well-armed security personnel patrolling the streets in, in groups of three uh, constantly in the Jewish quarter and also even in the Muslim quarter where, where Jews are residing and amongst the Arabs there where they constantly face attacks uh, by them. But anyway, it says here that Arush Shiva has learned that the, officers, uh, the officer began his job on Tuesday, joining a security officer appointed by the educational system and working on the behalf of the municipality and the old city uh, neighborhoods, including the Jewish Quarter. Last week, it was revealed that the housing ministry is, is operating a security system in the old city basin, their quarters of the old city, the Mount of Olives, uh, Shalak. Uh, Silwan in the city of David, which suggests Jerusalem is uh, indeed under an intifada. I want you to hear that once again. The article states here that be, in, as a result that the security force had to be hired by the municipality and set up to guard the Mount of Olives, Shiloh, or Silwan as some people call it, and the city of David. Uh, also, uh, the Jewish quarter as well, uh, the, in the old, uh, the old city basin there. It says, suggest Jerusalem is indeed under an intifada. Now, let's look at the statistics on this. So it kind of gives you a better idea of why this is actually needed. In June and July, there were 580 terror attacks against Jewish civilians and security forces, including 477 stone throwing attacks at vehicles and 28 firebombing attacks on Jewish houses and vehicles. Other security incidents included throwing uh, empty glass bottles, shooting fireworks, and destruction of property. Jerusalem City Councilman Arya King pushes the council to appoint a security officer to guard the old city, uh, citing the hundreds of calls from residents who felt the city was not taking an active enough role in preventing the attacks. Uh, I can only imagine, though, what uh, the guidelines are for this, uh, to say the least there. Now, let me give you another example, though, uh, of, of a Jewish attack here. So, Because, like I said, some people think sometimes that these uh, thrown, stone throwing uh, cases are really nothing here. Uh, take a look on your screen here. This shattered out window here, this was a Jewish family. Uh, this is on another article on uh, Israel National News. It says Jewish families attack, uh, attacked by Arab mob in Shalach. Uh, it says here a group of Jewish families living in the Shalach or Silwan neighborhood of Jerusalem were attacked by an Arab mob on Monday. The group that was attacked on Monday were helped to move into the area by uh, Etaret uh, Kohanim an institution that has made it a priority to help facilitate uh, the redemption of Jewish property held by Arabs. Uh, Atarat Kohanim's executive director, Daniel Lerua, spoke to Arut Shiva on Tuesday and recounted the two separate attacks on Jewish families uh, that occurred on Monday night. The first attack occurred around 8.30 p.m. when an Arab terrorist threw an explosive at a Jewish vehicle, which was luckily empty. Another attack around 10 p.m. saw Arabs throwing an explosive at a car transporting two families into the area. The explosive was powerful. It burst uh, apart the steel mesh grid on top of the bulletproof uh, front window of the vehicle. And this is what you're seeing here. So this definitely was some type of explosive. It is a bulletproof glass and it has just destroyed this car's windshield there. But luckily the glass being bulletproof kept it from penetrating. The steel uh, cages on these vehicles are extremely thick. They're nothing lightweight there. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to put it on the screen here for you as well. A car that we have as well that was attacked uh, on numerous occasions, just to give you an idea how thick the steel grids are on them there. Uh, uh, according to Larua, police are investigating the incidents but have not yet arrested any suspects. They say the explosives used were stronger than regular firebombs. Uh, the incident comes several days after another group of Jewish families reclaimed homes in Shylock last Thursday. Those homes are a part of the Beit Rachel complex uh, built on land that belonged to the Yemenite uh, Hakadesh the old Yemenite community of Jerusalem, which was founded in 1882. At its peak, 144 to 150 Yemenite Jewish families were living 
and thriving and successful in the Yemenite village on the slopes of Mount Zion overlooking the city of David. The Shalak Springs, the Temple Mount, and the Old City, many of the original Jewish buildings were destroyed by the Arab, uh, Arabs between 1938 and 1945 through the title of the land still, uh, excuse, th through the title on the land still remained. Uh, anyway, just tremendous problems going on all over the world. Israel certainly the focal point of everything. Uh, NATO and Russia at each other's necks right there. Uh, you can only hope and pray that peace would come out of this situation, especially in the case of NATO and Russia. The last thing we need is, a, uh, is an all-out war between these two nations, because believe me, if it goes into a war, it is going to be a major war. Nothing, nothing at all to sneeze at. And both countries uh, possessing tremendous capabilities to annihilate the other country. And that's something that Yeshua actually stated uh, also, that uh, they would be speaking of total destruction, which Iran has threatened to, to totally destroy Israel. Um, and Russia has made it quite clear they would use nuclear weapons if they saw that they were not winning a war. So, very serious situation indeed. Uh, anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.